All right, in this video, I want to show you how to change out a screen, a laptop screen, um, on any Acer net, uh, any Acer netbook or laptop. This particular model is an Acer Aspire, and uh, usually you can find the the model number here on the bottom. Uh, as you can see here, this one is a uh, 7540 Acer Aspire 7540. But again, this will work with any Acer laptop or netbook, um, even the Chromebooks. But um, you know, your screen could be broken for multiple reasons. You know, you might have uh, accidentally dropped it, or it might just went bad. You know, things do go bad. Um, you might have had a cat that stepped on the lid, or or what have you. Now, it's not as difficult as it would appear to be if you've never done it before. And um, and it's very you could actually do it pretty cheaply, even less than sometimes less than fifty or forty bucks you can get it done uh, yourself. And um, there's not really much you have to do. I would recommend first to take disassemble and take the screen off uh, before trying to purchase a screen for it. And um, to do that, what you're going to want to do is you want to take the battery out. That's the first thing. So there you go and flip it back over and the good thing about it too is you're not going to have to uh, usually you're not going to have to disassemble anything like the palm rest or anything it's literally as simple as taking the the bezel off and then um, replacing the screen um, now laptops the only tools you're going to need for this is a Phillips head screwdriver small Phillips head and then um, something like a little steak knife or as you can see here is a real small flathead um, if you had like a credit card that would help as well to go along the edges as you can see here on this particular laptop it's a large screen I think this one's a 17 either a 15.6 or 17.3 it's gigantic what you want to want to do is look this little plastic thing that's covering uh, the screen is called a bezel a screen bezel it's plastic and uh, what you're going to want to do, that's the first thing you're going to do is take this off. Now there's going to be what I call end caps that are covering the screws, usually. It's always a combination of end caps and screws. And they're going to be covering the corners. They're going to be covering usually the, you know, all four corners of the uh, laptop. And this particular one, since it's a large screen, it actually has two in the center here. There's one here and one here. Um, so you just basically go around your bezel and look for any end caps. As you can see here, I went ahead and collected, and I've already undo, done much of the, the screws. And um, little end caps are like little plastic covers. And to get those off, the only thing you really have to do is just take your little small Phillips head and what you want to do is pry it open. Um, you know, this particular one, I went ahead and disassembled. But as you can see there, the screw goes in. And what's going to happen is there's going to be an end cap that's over that. So what you want to do is you want to you want to take that end cap off. You want to peel it off like this until you get it off, and then that'll expose the screw. And then of course you just unscrew. Okay. Once you got all the end caps and the screws out of all four corners, and sometimes you'll actually have a corner, especially on the bottom, where sometimes they won't even have a um, they won't even have a screw, which that's completely fine. If that's the case, you know, just go around it and make sure. And then now what you want to do is once you got all the screws out, you want to take your little flathead screwdriver and then between the bezel and the lid itself, you want to have to, you're going to like squeeze it at open. And then you have to go around and then you what you're going to want to do is you want to go an inch at a time until it's completely loose. You don't want to do it at, at too much of an angle or you will crack and break your bezel. So you go around it. And 
this seems like a lot easier than what it is and it is a tad bit easier because I've already done it but sometimes it just takes a little bit of muscle okay now once you go around there this is on the hinges the hinges is part of actual the bezel and what I do is I take my Phillips head and I'll go under it and I'll pop it up there's one and then I'll go on this side here. There you go. So that's your bezel. You see there how that just uh, that basically cuffed the hinges. Like that. Now you got your two hinge rails that I would call that are they're on the side, one side and two side. Sometimes they're completely different, sometimes they're not. Also, what you want to also do is unhook your webcam if it does include a webcam. A lot of times they don't. But as you can see there, I've already taken this one out. But I'll go ahead and put it back in. So what you're going to want to do is take your Phillips and you want to make sure you don't strip your webcam wires. So you want to go maybe use one, go on the bottom and then use your fingernail and go on the other side and pull out very gently. If you push too hard it will break those cables. Alright, so that's off. And then now for the hint for the um, rails, there's going to be a set of screws on the left and the right hinge, right? So you can see here, here's one and then there's of course two or three more sometimes there's only if it's a smaller screen sometimes it's only two so we'll go ahead and unscrew all right now I went ahead and, and I got all screws on the left and the right hinge rail and then what you do is just lift up a little bit and pull up and there should be one video cable hooking up to your screen and so what you want to do there's adhesive holding it down or tape so what you want to do is take the tape off and then take that video cable off your screen which would be your broken screen of course Alright, and then with your webcam, if it's got one, you want to gently make sure that's off. Okay, and you want to gently pull out. Alright, there you go. So, the only thing we're left is with a, is a broken screen. Now, the reason I told you to first take your broken screen out first before you buy a new one is, is for cause of uh, price. Um, you're not going to, if you want to get this at eBay or Amazon or wherever, you're going to want to enter the model number of the screen itself. Um, a lot of people will just put the model number of the laptop. They'll say Acer Aspire 7540 screen. And sure enough, they'll be on there, but it'll be higher in price. So the smart thing to do is to actually pull the model number off. And the reason is, is because multiple screens will actually go with multiple different computers. You can have, like this particular screen here will go with an Acer, but it'll actually go with some uh, HP laptops and a couple of Dells because the manufacturer of the screen makes it for multiple computers. So what you're going to want to do is like, for example, if I go on eBay, I'm going to plug in the, the model number. This one says model number B as in Bobby, 173R as in Ralph, W01. So I'm going to plug that in and um, this particular screen I got off of eBay and I paid 35 bucks for it. Um, now it is used 
but however, um, you know, you're using a used computer. Sometimes you'll actually see a new one that's priced reasonably low. A lot of times as low as forty or fifty bucks, and you could search. Just make sure you're getting one that is functional and that's either says used or new. You don't want to get one that says parts and repair. And you want to make sure you read the description to make sure it doesn't say, you know, has lines through it or has blemishes. You know, you don't want that, you know, because you can get a lot more better for your money. Now, I went ahead and purchased one, as you can see, and this is a used one. And this one is, has the exact same model number, it, but it was actually uh, advertised for a, um, a pavilion. So, the uh, only thing I do here, is just re loop and redo everything I just undid. All right? Make sure that adhesive is on. And gently put it back. Put my screws on my hinge back. If you notice, my keyboard's missing three buttons. So I went ahead and ordered a keyboard for it too. I got the keyboard for ten bucks, and eBay's another really good place that you can get keyboards at. This one, pretty good condition. Now, what a lot of people will do is they'll just replace the keys themselves. But I've found with experience, it's not worth doing it. it it's time consuming, um, and those keys will cost five bucks themselves. So why not just get a new one for, or a, a real nice one for ten bucks, and you don't have to worry about the labor of trying to get that key on. So we'll just go ahead and put this one screw in for demonstration. This particular laptop, I think, uh, someone actually gave me this one. They said that they had it on their porch. Um, you know, their wife broke the screen. And she got angry or something. I think the hard drive was going bad. She got angry at it and she slammed it on the ground. I mean, I haven't fully tested it yet, but I want to assume it's just the screen that's broken. Because I did test it, I did turn it on with a, an external monitor on the VGA port, and it came up on the external monitor just fine. So I'm thinking the only thing's wrong is just the screen, and a keyboard will set it up. And then, of course, I'll do the other side all the screws on that side and redo the bezel and then I should be fine I'll make the adjustments later now I'm going to go ahead and uh, show you on eBay how to get your screen uh, the cheapest way possible what you want to do is you want to go to buy it now lowest first and you want to make sure you are going for um, something that's used or new, not parts and repair. So I'll show you the demonstration right now. Okay, now we're at eBay, eBay.com, and um, I want to go ahead and enter the model number of the screen that I need for my Acer Aspire laptop. Um, very easy to do. You just basically plug it in the search, and this particular one is B as in boy 173RW01, rather. Click search and see what pops up. Alright, so immediately we start the search, and the very top one, which is the best match, comes up with 62 bucks. I'm assuming it's brand new, 637 sold. Well, what we're going to do is we're going to go to the lowest first which includes shipping and right now we see ribbons right and then we click buy it now we don't want to do auction because it just takes too long too time consuming so we start to go from the lowest price we see one here that's eleven dollars and ninety one cents unfortunately it says sold as is skip that one here's one it says ten dollars plus ten shipping so let's go ahead and click on that one Okay, immediately for item condition, it says for parts and repair 
were not working. So we want to pass on that immediately. That one says as is. Genuine as is. Nope. Here's one that says flawed LCD. Nope. Here's one. For parts and repair, not working. You don't want that one. Keep going. Here we go. Here's one for 36 bucks. Now, this one says used. So this might be a good one. Two people are watching. Um, and six bucks off of it. Now, it says HP Pavilion G7 2017.3 inch screen. Now, we know our screen 17.3 inches, but why does it say HP Pavilion? Well, we discussed that, that screen manufacturers will make the same screen for multiple uh, uh, companies like Acer, Toshiba, Dell. So let's keep going down and look at the item description. Okay, and we want to see where it says about the details. Okay, it says, please look at the photo. Item has scratches. So I'm assuming the scratches is on the screen. Um, I would pass on that. There's a scratch there. I would pass on that just because um, you can get a better deal. Let's go back. Here's one that says scratches. Keep going. Let's look at this one. This one's a used one, four dollars off, so the total is thirty-six dollars and free shipping. Okay, looks good so far. Let's see what the item description on this one is. Uh, so far, let's see, genuine Asus. Please look at the photo. Item has scratches. See there, they're pointing it out. That one might be okay if the scratches were small. Let's look at this one. Wow, they sold 34 of these. And they're listed as Adele and Spiron. But the main thing we're looking at is the model number, which is right here. Screen is in excellent condition, no dead pixels, and I'm assuming no scratches. So this would be the one I would get, because the model matches up, and it looks good. A lot of times, usually they'll show the back of the picture, or the back of the LCD screen, which is, you really want to see that, to be honest with you, um, just to make sure the VGA cable lines up and it looks identical to yours. Um, so I'm surprised that they don't have that on there. However, um, it would be a good bet that you can go ahead and get this screen. It is 17 inches, and it has the exact same model number. I wouldn't see why you couldn't get that one. Um, here's another one, grade B. See here, this, this right here it shows the back of it. So that way you can just match it up visually and make sure it you know it it looks like the one that you that that you're replacing um so that gives you an idea you can get a used one like i said for 30 to 40 bucks um you might even get a new one for 50 um i don't see anything wrong with getting a used one if everything works good on it so if you have any questions just let me know and hope you enjoy the video okay so you can see I uh, replaced the screen, I actually replaced the keyboard as well. So go ahead and power on. And voila, there we go. Just like new. Thanks for watching.